I have uh, watched many of the movies that you've written many times, so it is actually very cool to be able to finally talk to you. Oh, thanks. Um, jumping right on in, uh, uh, this is what this is a genre that doesn't get made that often in the Hollywood studio system. Is that one of the reasons that this project appealed to you more than, say, maybe some others? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, as a director, certainly, and all, but also as a writer, I, you know, you try to mix it up. Ho Hollywood, Hollywood will reward success by giving you the ability to do the exact same thing that you did successfully, and and that's fine. That's in their interests, and you know, but the creative growth isn't necessarily their their responsibility. It's yours. So. Um, I try to do things that scare me a little bit that I've never done before that, you know, could be colossal failures and, and see what happens. But also, um, I try to do things that I wish I could go see at the movies. And, you know, I love the, the, the sort of spirit of the Blake Edwards, Peter Sellers type stuff in the mid-60s. Also, the, you know, some of the Ealing comedies of the 50s, particularly the Alec Guinness stuff. Um, and uh, I, wanted to see, I wanted to see a movie like that. Uh, you put together a ridiculous cast for this movie. How hard was it? I mean, great cast. How hard was it to bring everyone together? Or was when Johnny gets involved, all of a sudden everyone else is like, oh, I want to do that too? There's two things. There's some of that. The, 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 the script really starts everything because without the script, you don't get anybody. So um, we had a very funny script with some great characters in it, which is what made Johnny uh, want to play Mordecai. And then the subsidiary characters were good as well, and people want to work with Johnny. So I was really surprised and delighted that on, with every role, we got our first choice of actor. And it's never happened to me on a movie before. Um, the, and then it acquires a momentum of its own. People just want to join up. Uh, how long was your first cut compared to what people are seeing in theaters? Um, not so much longer. My first cut was probably an hour 52. Oh, so it's only a little bit longer. <clears throat> and then I think we came in 97 minutes. Um, so. was your, now, is your first cut like an assembly, or is your first cut like a cut that you could release if you wanted to? I don't, yeah, and there is such a thing as an assembly, but I don't even call that a cut. That's everything you got just right. strung together with no input or discussion just so you have it. So that, that I wouldn't call a cut. My first cut was something that you could release, you'd be unwise because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to work on these things right. a little bit. <laughs> um, what did you learn from the friends and family or test screenings that impacted the final release? Uh, you know, it, almost always with every film, <clears throat> the most important thing you learn is about your pace. Um, you can't waste people's time. And you find what plays best, what doesn't play as well, and what should uh, come out to keep things moving. Um, uh, briskly, I at least those are the kind of movies I enjoy. I, I thrill when I see that a movie's 97 minutes. When I see that it's two hours 20, I think hard about it and plan my night and think, well, I really want to go to dinner. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I was going to make a joke about Judd Apatow films because his films have been gotten getting longer and longer, and you know a lot of people are having fun with that. He does he does like a longer movie. They I mean they work. Um, so you know I'm I'm of the shorter is better school. I, uh, I like them short, I like them tight. Um, so mostly you just, when you're watching early cuts with people, you, you listen for where they start shifting around or coughing or God forbid checking their email. And uh, that gives you a pretty good indication. Um, I have two last questions for you. Uh, the first one is you've written uh, a lot of big movies and I'm curious, like Tarantino likes to have certain uh, cigarettes in all of his movies to connect the universes. Is there a possibility that all the movies you've written are in the same universe. I'm sort of having fun with this, like Spider-Man, Jurassic Park, and Mordecai are all, um, but you didn't write Mordecai, but y you know what I mean. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty hard to unite stuff when other directors are doing it, because they tend to find the little things that are your, <laughs> your little Easter eggs for yourself and, and get rid of them. But I will say if you were to methodically go through uh, everything I've directed and a number of the things I wrote, you'd find the number 26 popping up a number of times. So the, I was not wrong with my Easter egg. If you see thing. a clock, it'll most likely 226, 1226, 426. Um, my last question for you. Uh, you are a pro prolific screenwriter. I know that you uh, wrote a draft of The Huntsman. Uh, you work in uh, Inferno. What, what's coming up for you that you're excited about just writing-wise? And what can you tease people about Huntsman? Um, I'm actually not involved with Huntsman. Oh, uh, that I was it. No, it's easily misunderstood. I wrote uh, a draft of uh, when it was Snow White and the Huntsman. Um, some time ago, 
And uh, then they decided they wanted to make it just with the Huntsman, but that was a wholly different project. So I'm actually not involved with that one. Inferno, I'm, I'm very excited about. I think uh, we start shooting in April in uh, Florence and Venice and Budapest. And um, I, I think it's great. I think it could be the best of the, of the Langdon stories. And I'm really excited that Hanks is back and Ron Howard's back to do it. I, I think that's working out very well. I saw, I gotta go, but I saw Hank, uh, uh, Ron Howard uh, doing some Instagram photos, being on the Sony lot, being excited. And you know, I'm, oh, I'm looking. Cool. I'm looking forward to seeing what he has cooked up as well. Yeah, it's strikingly different from the others, but um, but obviously same character and and you know, a crazy guy's left a clue path. I mean, that's that's <laughs> right. not giving anything away. <laughs> okay, thank <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thank uh, you. Really